What am I in the eyes of most people? A non-entity, an eccentric, or an unpleasant person? Somebody who has no position in society and will never have? In short, the lowest of the low. All right then, even if that were absolutely true, then I should one day like to show by my work what such an eccentric, such a nobody, has in his heart. Vincent Van Gogh. As Van Gogh himself stated, he was an artist who could not communicate well with people, was not liked and understood by people. He was a lonely soul. Still, his passion for painting, his unique style, and his perspective on art made him one of the world's leading painters, although his value was not appreciated at that time. Let's take a look at the tragic story of this incredibly famous painter who lived through depression, loneliness, misery, and art, and unfortunately ended in suicide. Vincent Willem van Gogh was born on the 30th of March 1853 in the province of North Brabant in the Netherlands. He was the oldest surviving child of Theodorus van Gogh, a minister of the Dutch Reformed Church, and his wife, Anna Cornelia Carbentus. Van Gogh's mother came from a prosperous family, and his father was the youngest son of a minister. His grandfather was art dealer, and his uncle was a sculptor. Van Gogh was a serious and thoughtful child. He was a quiet, self-contained youth, spending his free time wandering the countryside to observe nature. He was taught at home by his mother and a governess, and in 1860 was sent to the village school. In 1864, he was placed in a boarding school at Zevenbergen, where he felt abandoned, and he campaigned to come home. Instead, in 1866, his parents sent him to the middle school in Tilburg, where he was also deeply unhappy. His interest in art began at a young age. He was encouraged to draw as a child by his mother, and his early drawings are expressive, but do not approach the intensity of his later work. At age 15, Van Gogh's family was struggling financially, and he was forced to leave school and go to work. He got a job at his uncle Cornelis's art dealership, Goupil and Cie, a firm of art dealers in The Hague. Van Gogh worked for Goupil in London from 1873 to May 1875, and in Paris from that date until April 1876. Daily contact with works of art aroused his artistic sensibility, and he soon formed a taste for Rembrandt, Franz Hals, and other Dutch masters, although his preference was for two contemporary French painters, Jean-Francois Millet and Camille Corot, whose influence was to last throughout his life. He also fell in love with his landlady's daughter, Eugenie Lawyer. When she rejected his marriage proposal, Van Gogh suffered a breakdown. He threw away all his books except for the Bible and devoted his life to God. He became angry with people at work, telling customers not to buy the worthless art, and was eventually fired. He worked as a language teacher and lay preacher in England, and in 1877 worked for a bookseller in Dordrecht, Netherlands. He was unhappy in the position and spent his time doodling or translating passages from the Bible into English, French, and German. He immersed himself in Christianity and became increasingly pious and monastic. Impelled by a longing to serve humanity, he envisaged entering the ministry. However, he abandoned this project in 1878 for short-term training as an evangelist in Brussels. A conflict with authority ensued when he disputed the orthodox doctrinal approach. Failing to get an appointment after three months, he left to do missionary work among the impoverished population of the Borinage, a coal mining region in southwestern Belgium. There, in the winter of 1879-80, he experienced the first great spiritual crisis of his life. Living among the poor, he gave away all his worldly goods in an impassioned moment. He was thereupon dismissed by church authorities for a too literal interpretation of Christian teaching. Penniless and feeling that his faith was destroyed, he sank into despair and withdrew from everyone. They think I'm a madman, he told an acquaintance, because I wanted to be a true Christian. They turned me out like a dog, saying that I was causing a scandal. It was then that Van Gogh began to draw seriously, thereby discovering in 1880 his true vocation as an artist. Van Gogh decided that his mission from then on would be to bring consolation to humanity through art. I want to give the wretched a brotherly message, he explained to his brother Theo. He traveled to Brussels later to follow his brother Theo's recommendation that he study with the Dutch artist Willem Roloffs, 
who persuaded him, in spite of his dislike of formal schools of art, to attend the Académie Royale des Beaux-Arts. He registered at the Academy in November 1880, where he studied anatomy and the standard rules of modeling and perspective. Van Gogh returned to Eton in April 1881 for an extended stay with his parents. He continued to draw, often using his neighbors as subjects. In August 1881, his recently widowed cousin, Cornelia Key Vostricker, arrived for a visit. He was thrilled and took long walks with her. Van Gogh surprised everyone by declaring his love to her and proposing marriage. She refused with the words, no, nay, never. Van Gogh's love life was nothing short of disastrous. He was attracted to women in trouble, thinking he could help them. His second cousin, Anton Mauve, was the successful artist Van Gogh longed to be. He moved to Lehe to work with Mauve. Mauve introduced him to painting in oil and lent him money to set up a studio. Soon after, he first painted in oils, bought with money borrowed from Theo. Van Gogh then moved to The Hague and fell in love with Klesina Maria Hornick, an alcoholic prostitute. She became his companion, mistress, and model. When Hornick went back to prostitution, Van Gogh became utterly depressed. In 1882, his family threatened to cut off his money unless he left Hornick in The Hague. Van Gogh left in mid-September of that year to travel to Drenthe, a somewhat desolate district in the Netherlands. For the next six weeks, he lived a nomadic life, moving throughout the region while drawing and painting the landscape and its people. He remained at Nieuwenen during most of 1884 and 1885, and during these years his art grew bolder and more assured. He painted three types of subjects, still life, landscape, and figure, all interrelated by their reference to the daily life of peasants, to the hardships they endured, and to the countryside they cultivated. Van Gogh's art helped him stay emotionally balanced. In 1885 he began work on what is considered to be his first masterpiece, Potato Eaters. Van Gogh discovered Japanese prints, an impressionist painting. He left precipitately in 1886 to join Theo in Paris. There, still concerned with improving his drawing, Van Gogh met Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, Paul Gauguin, and others who were to play historic roles in modern art. They opened his eyes to the latest developments in French painting. His palette at last became colorful, his vision less traditional, and his tonalities lighter, as may be seen in his first paintings of Montmartre. Finally. By the beginning of 1888, Van Gogh's post-impressionist style had crystallized, resulting in such masterpieces as Portrait of Père Tanguy and Self-Portrait in Front of the Easel, as well as in some landscapes of the Parisian suburbs. Van Gogh became influenced by Japanese art and began studying Eastern philosophy to enhance his art and life. He dreamed of traveling there, but was told by Toulouse-Lautrec that the light in the village of Arles was just like the light in Japan. In February 1888, Van Gogh boarded a train to the south of France. He moved into a now famous yellow house and spent his money on paint rather than food. His financial supporter here was again be his brother Theo. The time in Arles became one of Van Gogh's more prolific periods. He completed 200 paintings and more than 100 drawings and watercolors. He was enchanted by the local countryside and light. His works from this period are rich in yellow, ultramarine and mauve. He also painted here of his famous paintings, Van Gogh's Chair, Bedroom in Arles, Night Café, Night Café Terrace, Starry Night Over the Rhone. Van Gogh was living on coffee, bread, and absinthe in Arles, France, and he found himself feeling sick and strange. Before long, it became apparent that in addition to suffering from physical illness, his psychological health was declining. Around this time, he is known to have sipped on turpentine and eaten paint. He had a special admiration for Gauguin. He rented and decorated a house in Arles with the intention of persuading him to join him and found a working community called the Studio of the South. Gauguin arrived in October 1888 and for two months, Van Gogh and Gauguin worked together. But while each influenced the other to some extent, the relations rapidly deteriorated because they had opposing ideas and were temperamentally incompatible. Van Gogh admired Gauguin and wanted to be treated as his equal but Gauguin was arrogant and domineering, which frustrated Van Gogh. They often quarreled. Van Gogh increasingly feared that Gauguin was going to desert him, and the situation, which Van Gogh described as one of excessive tension, rapidly headed towards crisis point. One night, Gauguin walked out. Van Gogh followed him. And when Gauguin turned around, he saw Van Gogh holding a razor in his hand. 
Hours later, he wholly or in part severed his left ear with a razor. He bandaged the wound, wrapped the ear in paper, and delivered the package to a prostitute at a brothel Van Gogh and Gauguin both frequented. With blood pouring from his hand, he offered her his ear, asking her to keep this object carefully. Van Gogh was found unconscious the next morning by a policeman and taken to hospital. The doctor did not attempt to reattach the ear as too much time had passed. Gauguin fled Arles, never to see Van Gogh again. Van Gogh returned home a fortnight later and resumed painting, producing a mirror image self-portrait with bandaged ear. Several weeks later, he again showed symptoms of mental disturbance. In March, the police closed his house after a petition by 30 townspeople who described him as the red-headed madman. At the end of April 1889, fearful of losing his renewed capacity for work, which he regarded as a guarantee of his sanity, he asked to be temporarily shut up in the asylum at Saint-Rémy-de-Provence in order to be under medical supervision. Twelve months, haunted by recurrent attacks, alternating between moods of calm and despair, and working intermittently. He painted here one of the famous paintings, The Starry Night. It depicts the view from the east-facing window of his asylum room at Saint-Rémy-de-Provence, just before sunrise, with the addition of an imaginary village. Van Gogh himself brought this period to an end. Oppressed by homesickness and loneliness, he longed to see Theo and arrived in Paris in May 1890. Four days later, he went to stay with a doctor artist, Paul Ferdinand Gachet. Van Gogh worked at first enthusiastically, but his phase was short, however, and it ended in quarrels with Gachet and feelings of guilt at his financial dependence on Theo and his inability to succeed. On July 27, 1890, Vincent Van Gogh went out to paint in the morning carrying a loaded pistol and shot himself in the chest, but the bullet did not kill him. He was found bleeding in his room. Van Gogh was taken to a nearby hospital, and his doctor sent for Theo, who arrived to find his brother sitting up in bed and smoking a pipe. They spent the next couple of days talking together, and then Van Gogh asked Theo to take him home. On July 29, 1890, Vincent Van Gogh died in the arms of his brother Theo. He was only 37 years old. According to Theo, Vincent's last words were, The sadness will last forever. Van Gogh, whose life is devoted to art, always was desperately poor. He had sustained by his faith in the urgency of what he had to communicate and by the generosity of Theo, who believed in him implicitly. The name of Van Gogh was virtually unknown when he killed himself. Of the more than 800 oil paintings and 700 drawings, he had sold only one in his lifetime. After Theo's death, his wife Joanna then collected as many of Van Gogh's paintings as she could but discovered that many had been destroyed or lost, as Van Gogh's own mother had thrown away crates full of his art. On March 17, 1901, 71 of Van Gogh's paintings were displayed at a show in Paris, and his fame grew enormously. His mother lived long enough to see her son hailed as an artistic genius. Largely on the basis of the works of the last three years of his life, Van Gogh is generally considered one of the greatest Dutch painters of all time. His work exerted a powerful influence on the development of much modern painting. Today, Vincent van Gogh is considered one of the greatest artists in human history. For more videos, don't forget to like and subscribe.